Hi, I'm Monique Devereaux from the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. I'm here with Dr Jan Kupek, the geotechnical engineer that has been working on the Port Hills scenarios. Um, as you'll be aware today we have made several areas of the Port Hills red zone. This is one of those areas in particular this area has been affected by cliff collapse and where we are is a good example to explain what has happened to the land here. In front of us is, is sort of the, the line of what's happened here. Can you talk us through it? Of course I can. Thanks Monique. Like, first of all, what we note behind us is obviously, before we go to the land, a structure in severe structural distress. And that's probably one thing which the cliffs uh, have in peculiar. Because the cliffs are made of rocks and are really angular and generally on spurs, a lot of the seismic energy has been actually transferred onto the cliff edges. And that caused, first of all, structural distress but also it actually damaged the line so if in front of us we have a crack which is about 300 millimeters wide and actually opened up after february and then progressively got wider with every major aftershock so these cracks have been actually surveyed measured and from the behavior of the cracking of the cliff the geology underneath it we determine that this area could actually fail catastrophically and in that area below us, hence areas like these ones were actually zoned red because there's a life safety risk over here. So the chance of this crack opening and failing in, in another aftershock, what you're saying is this could essentially be the edge of the cliff should the aftershock yep. be big enough? That's exactly right. So um, we have mapped areas on the Port Hills we believe that another repeat of either February or June will cause substantial regression of the cliff edge and that will actually mean bits will actually fall off and that could be in this particular instance a new cliff edge. Yes. And is there no way of remediating against that? Uh, we had a look at potential remediation options, but um, again, um, it has been done in very, very few instances in the world, and the geology of these cliffs actually don't lend itself to it, and it's very costly, it's no time effective, and very, very uncertain that it actually will work. The types of accelerations we have on the Port Hills in terms of seismic shaking is so high that we don't believe that the traditional uh, remediation measure would even work or be feasible. Okay. So looking down into that house there, the, the crack's quite obvious. Is that the edge of the new cliff? Yes, Monique. What you actually see within this particular property, which is very typical for the other cliff top properties, you can see the damage would actually compromise the foundation and the house itself. So there's about uh, 50 millimeters cracking, which on its own is probably not as bad, but that particular crack is up parallel to the cliff edge, and we believe that the future seismic event that may become the new cliff edge, or the cliff could regress up to that point. Now, in this particular year, we had actually a look since um, February, and we have a couple of survey markers, and we have some very simple one as, um, felt pen on a wall up to a complex continuous GPS stations employed on this and other properties. So we actually can monitor how this area has performed over February, Easter aftershock, June and December earthquakes. We have determined this is a area is not a safe place to live and hence it's been zoned red. The other thing which you can see here is essentially cracking that occurred after February and June and there are several areas where the cracks are over 100 millimeters wide and it's still open. The problem is if you go to other areas, a good example is Whitewash Head, you will not be able to see some of these cracks because the soil washed actually into these cracks and closed them over. So quite often you would actually be able to go all the way to the cliff edge without noticing you're actually in an area of a cliff deformation. So what we're seeing here is what is in other areas but isn't as obvious. Correct. In this particular area it was sheltered a bit more through the vegetation from rain and it's more obvious now after 15 months. In other areas the cracks have closed where they are actually monitored. So people may not be aware exactly of the danger that is underneath them but that is why so many properties like this are sitting on land that we have now designated red zone because of the cliff collapse risk. Correct.